All right. All right. What's up? What's up, everybody? Planet Xbox Podcast. Powered by Weapon Wheel Podcast, Weapon Wheel Network, Weapon Wheel Patreon. Make sure you subscribe, hit the like button. Welcome back for another episode, episode five, uh, with this new uh, way that we're doing things. So I am your host, Best Spot Kiss Move. And for those, you know, real fans of the podcast, really familiar with the podcast, uh, this shouldn't be a uh, surprise or you shouldn't be lost, but we do have, you know, honorary uh member of the planet xbox podcast back when it was on my channel and by you know obviously popular demand <laughs> old man logan welcome back how you doing no shout shout out to bg man because he really made a statement last week saying uh get get me back on even jack smooth you know shout out to him <laughs> uh so no obviously uh i'm excited to be here obviously again and to see this new new format, it's a little bit weird not seeing the chat over here on the screen pulled up. So since this is pre-recorded, yeah. But <laughs> as, as always, for you know the past almost three years, I'm happy to be here like always. Yeah, appreciate it. No, BG has always been a a, a, a supporter of you um, on the podcast. Uh, he was like, "So I don't care what you do with the podcast as long as you, <laughs> as long as you keep Logan." <laughs> Like, <laughs> hey, 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 I'll take it, man. I'll take it. Must mean I do at least something right, right? Because I like, I appreciate BG and respect that man. So, yeah. obviously, happy to be here. That's what's up. That's what's up, uh, Logan. Uh, sensible, sensible guy. Was uh, cool to have uh, for a conversation. Of course, we got Lord Addict, Gaming Addict, fresh back from the LA trip. I'm a little jelly. <laughs> Yeah, so I feel like I have jet lag for some reason. <laughs> it's it's been a it's been a really long. Week. That's what's up. That's what's up. But you know, I'm still happy for you. you guys. Got to go out uh, and you know see you know the Xbox that leads to other you know content creators. This is always a good time, good thing to do in LA during the E3 time of year. Uh, so not to uh, like uh, get up, uh, put us behind or anything like that, but. I'm gonna start with some Patreon questions. I don't think there were too many um, because B, the way BG phrased the question, I think he just copied and pasted what what like the showcase based ones. And it was like there was we're not going after the showcase, but uh, it's not really a question. It was more so a statement from uh, Arachimoro, Arachimoro, forty five. He says GT seven clears Midsa. And y'all know it, but Godfield clears DLC man too. <laughs> Any thoughts what? on that? What? So pretty much what he was saying is he said GTA seven clears mid to, and he's calling Fort to mid. Um, yeah, yeah, I, I get that part. Yeah. And then he says Godfield clears DLC man too. So I'm assuming Starfield clearing Spider Man too, in terms of uh, presentation. Uh, I mean, hey, we're gonna we're gonna definitely get into it. Uh, but before we get into it, I want to hear what you guys have been playing. Um, we're going to start with, uh, Logan. Oh man, dude, I've been playing just an absolute random amount of stuff. Uh, so obviously I'm still grinding away at Diablo four. Absolutely loving it. That's like my new release game that I'm playing. Mm -hmm. Um, but I've also been playing a lot of like random other older stuff so i did spec ops the line if you guys remember that game yep i uh, went through platinum that game and Wait, then you platinum i also or 100 completed it uh platinum it like on playstation so yeah yeah i got it on ps3 so like yeah i'm like literally literally plot like got my ps3 like if you don't see it As next to the series so the series yeah. s right here is the ps3 right here's my controller um so yeah i've, I've been playing like Oh, like some older stuff. I don't know. I just had an itch to play some older stuff. Um, but then I've also been, and even to go with my older stuff, I just finished Medal of Honor Frontline today. Oh, wow. That's pretty um, old. If you're, if you, yeah, yeah, if you remember that on the PS2. So I'm working on getting the platinum in that um, as well. Wait, did that game I, got trophy support? Yeah, it, it's when they did Medal of Honor 2010. Okay. Um, they gave the game uh, trophy support because it was like bundled in Medal of Honor 2010 or 
you could buy it like separately for like 10 bucks but i i got it in that medal of honor edition um so yeah i've been playing like just a couple of random old stuff and then the other new thing that i've been playing so i've had like two old and two new right diablo um spec ops medal of honor and then my other new one is that i've actually been playing uh amnesia the bunker um yes. that was popped up on xbox and game pass and i am absolutely loving that game um if you love horror games i i'd highly recommend it it's like takes place i want to say around world war ii um you're basically trapped in this bunker with this mysterious monster and you're trying to obviously escape Mm -hmm. Um, and that you start like unlocking like certain areas of this bunker and, and trying to find stuff to help you get out of there. And then this monster will just randomly come out of the walls and try to like hunt you down basically. And there's these rats and it's just a whole, whole bunch of stuff. And I'm just loving like the exploration, reading the notes, um, finding like the combinations for like fallen soldiers. Uh, Cause there's like a big like locker room that has like all their stuff locked behind it. And, uh, yeah, I'm, like, absolutely loving Amnesia the Bunker. So those are, like, my four games I've been, like, swapping through. Mm -hmm. And then, um, obviously, I'm excited for Final Fantasy 16 uh, coming out here in just, you know, less than a week. So amped and ready to play that. So, yeah, that's that's pretty much what I've been getting into recently. That's what's up. That's what's up. Attic, uh, I know you've been playing... Uh... <laughs> I know. I, I believe you mentioned uh, before Final Fantasy, but I want to know what you've uh, been currently playing. Uh, Persona Five Royale. I've been putting a lot more time into that. Every time I start to play Persona, I end up dropping it because something happened. Or I remember I was playing it on the PS4, but then when I got the uh, the PlayStation Five, mm -hmm. I assumed all the save transfers would come over as long as i was a playstation plus member mm -hmm. but apparently you have to like manually black it up or something yeah. so i lost it there so um you know i've been and then i started playing on the playstation 5 as a new save and i got to a point where i was just like you know what after it was announced for the for the xbox so let me just wait for it to get on xbox at this point <laughs> yeah uh, that's always been a thing with me with playstation um game so i just really uh sort of just gave up like relying on uh save files uh for it because i've lost like like i like i lost my last of us part two save file like even though i have i beat it whatever i got whatever trophies but if i was to boot up the game again it would have to be a new game as if nothing had ever happened um mm -hmm. but um which i mean which is like fine and whatnot that's why i'm very selective on like my uh the games that I uh, play over there. I played the uh, only thing I've really done significantly was play the Liza P demo and Final Fantasy 16 demo. Um, Liza P, uh, I need a little bit more practice. I have to just get myself back into uh, the Soulsborne experience. I think the game is going to uh, is going to be decent. It's not going to be. It's not a reincarnation of, of Bloodborne. Um, so I feel like the game is going to uh, land well. It just won't be that. You no know, critical hit, but it's going to be good, especially for fans of the genre. But the demo so far was pretty decent. Uh, Final Fantasy 16. Um, you guys know how I feel about Square Enix. Um, <laughs> and um, I figured, you know, I'd give it a try. It's, it's free on the PlayStation um, PlayStation Store to give it a try. Uh, demo's pretty good. Good job with the, uh, you know, the gameplay, the combat, uh, the satisfying combat. Um it's I'm pretty sure the game's uh, going to score well. Uh, I think Platinum did a decent job with the game. Uh, um, the uh, I'm I'm interested. I'd play it. I definitely I would buy it. But um, I'm just I'm just not sure if I'm going to do it day one. I have no I don't I have not preloaded the game, pre-downloaded the game, or pre-ordered the game or whatever. Uh, but it's probably going to be one of those you know late scratches. I don't see foresee anything significant that I'm playing unless I go into the backlog where I have a ton of games that I really need to play. But I took like a significant break from playing heavily, like drowning myself in a particular game. I think the last game that I seriously played uh, and, and, and beaten was like Ravenlock. And then I haven't really touched anything um, since then. I still have Hogwarts pending. I have to finish that. Still have, um, Oh my God! Uh, what other game had came out this year? Atomic Heart. 
haven't finished that. And um, I feel like there's another game that I'm missing uh, that came out. I haven't really even touched Diablo, uh, which I didn't realize that I had until uh, maybe a, a couple weeks ago. So um, I would like to try that, but we'll see what happens. Um, so as far as the uh, uh, what's on today's agenda, a couple things. Obviously, it's been a week since, you know, the showcases have wrapped up. Uh, you know, a Xbox game showcase, Ubisoft. Uh, the, I know there was a PC game showcase and everything. Um, and, you know, people are obviously still talking about the showcase. So I wanted to get everybody sort of beat. Now, obviously, I did the show, uh, the live reaction on the Iron Lords podcast. Shout out to King David, hold the line. Um, uh, Laura Attic for, our, you know, giving me the blessing to host it. Um, and then we did a react, uh, uh, I want to say immediate reactions after the show. I think I might have published a video about the showcase uh, in that time frame, but a week later, the dust is settled. Uh, and, and Logan, definitely curious uh, of your uh, reactions, your thoughts uh, to the show. I think I might have saw a couple things on Discord, but I didn't um, kind of get like the full feel of what you thought on the Xbox showcase. Yeah. So, are you just talking about the Xbox showcase in general, or are we talking about like summer games as like a whole? Um. I'll limit it to Xbox uh, showcase. Uh, I know summer games like there, okay. were, there were some some key highlights. I think I think like Alan Wake with, and Spider Man was a standout. I believe with some of the re- revelations there. Yeah. Um. So so I was actually pleasantly uh, pleased by Xbox's showcase. I think it was the the best showcase um, that was out out of the whole summer games fest. Um, you know, thing I was very disappointed in like capcoms and and uh what was uh, i'm trying to think of what's the one the company they just did the shadows of the damn remake um grasshopper manufacturing had a showcase mm-hmm. so i was like, actually expecting like i don't know something new from them because it's been kind of a while since we've seen anything um but i think xbox actually nailed it pretty much out of the park um outside of a couple of things that i wish we would have gotten a little bit more of a more in-depth look at fable um, cause I'm, that's like one of my most anticipated titles. Cause I love, absolutely love Fable, love Fable one, two, three, um, just adored that franchise altogether. So I'm very excited that, you know, it seems like from what we were shown playground, I, I think it'll be in good hands with playground. Um, you know, I, I'm kind of interested to see them finally branch out of just doing Forza horizon. Cause we saw that with respawn entertainment when they, went away from doing Titan falls and first person shooters. They've actually made pretty decent games, you know, out like the star Wars franchise. Um, so I'm kind of hoping that playgrounds kind of gets that same legacy, you know, started with them. Uh, but, um, from like my highlights, definitely Starfield. Um, that's one of my more anticipated games of this year, even though I know that game's actually coming on game pass and I can have it on day one. I could buy the premium edition. I actually, uh, have the, collector's edition pre-ordered um so i actually got the collector's edition pre-ordered on best buy it's the first xbox game that i cannot tell you in how long that i'm like like actually legitimately really super excited to get my hands on and play um i love the starfield direct i thought it was a big mass improvement from what we saw last year and we got to see a lot more in depth to it we got the combat looks a lot better um the graphics look a lot better the towns everything just a way overall improvement it's like one of those the games that like that year actually looks like it was worth the wait, right? Cause we were all disappointed that it was getting delayed last year, but it looks like that year long wait to see, you know what we're getting now. Definitely a lot better. Cause I remember when Halo had that year long wait, I feel like it didn't live up to that year long wait when it actually came out. But from what Starfield's looking like, um, it's looking really good. Uh, other big things from the, the showcase, um, clockwork revolution was another big, uh, big show for me. Um, cause I love Bioshock. I love those first person shooters, uh, yeah. the steampunk aesthetic. So like, I'm, I'm really pumped for what's going to come out of clockwork revolution. Um, and then obviously they had, you know, a couple little smaller titles and stuff like that. Forza looks, you know, Forza is going to be Forza. I love Forza. Um, so excited for Forza Motorsport. Hey, I was kind of hoping for a little bit of an earlier release date than yeah. October yeah. because yeah. October is super packed as it is. So for Forza to kind of get slammed in there with the likes of, I mean, in between Starfield, Spider-Man, 
um, Alan Wake 2, like, it, like September to October, I need to find a way to get two months of work just straight off. Yeah. Um, because there, there's just way, like, everything I'm looking forward to to come out is coming out literally in September, October. Yeah. Um, but, but yeah, like, I, I love the show. I think it's one of their better shows, um, in, in recent years. Um, if not, you know, kind of one of their all time best ones. And I just hope, you know, that they, that they're able to deliver on what they showed. Right. So I didn't come out of their showcase disappointed. I just need them to deliver on the games that they showed and then be, because no matter what Phil Spencer says, great games do make a difference. <laughs> yeah. Um, no, no, the, absolutely. Uh, the the showcase, like I said, was a you know running um, success. Like I said, it's a week later, look at Twitter. Everybody is still you know talking about uh, uh, so, so some of the games that was at the showcase, whether it be uh, to uh, downplay them or to like overhype them. You know, they're still being uh, talked about. Attic man, it's been a week. Since the showcase, have your thoughts changed? Has anything have you have did you are you more excited about something than you previously were after seeing the showcase? Or like has anything changed? You're muted. Starfield, I, I think that was the the game that really took the wind out, out of the cell, like in terms of like a good thing. Like I just feel like the, it's like I said, the biggest criticisms I can give was the Hellblade thing. Um, mm. But I will say what they showed on Starfield and they showed the mood that you're going to have with Fable. It was really good, you know, type of experience. I, I know I personally am a little disappointed of the avowal showing. Uh, but, you know, that that's for a different day. <laughs> I, okay. Um, personally... The, the the pillars uh, i think we talked about this maybe a couple weeks ago on when we were predicting the showcase i feel like the pillars uh showed well with the even with the hellblade even though the thing is it wasn't that hellblade looked bad it's the fact that we, we didn't see what we wanted of it and that was combat right that's my biggest complaint with the hellblade demo is like all right we know hellblade looks good it looks good they're, they're, they're we're not denying that we just want to now see how it plays and i feel like uh, they did not execute that showing. Now, Avowed, I don't care what nobody says. I know a lot of people, a lot of people was talking about Avowed. People say it got downgraded, and I'm trying to figure out from what since the first time we saw Avowed was a CGI that really showed burning arrows and cool Ghostwire Tokyo hand gestures. That's, that's really what we saw from Avowed as a CGI. But I can get jiggy with what we saw as from a game. Like, it looked like, okay, this is feasible, tangible. This literally what I looks like um and i might have said this before avow looks like what the outer world team would make if they had to take a shot at a skyrim competitor <laughs> that it, it just looks like a, a obsidian version of uh skyrim just like how the outer worlds was praised as like a, a more approachable more fun version remember when outer worlds was first announced it was like yeah this is how you do a Fallout game, right? When it was first announced and all that stuff, and like, and I thoroughly and I've and I've never beaten a Fallout game. I thoroughly enjoyed the Outer Worlds, beat it and beat the DLC. Love the game, love the world, love the characters, love the color, the vibrant, uh, the vibrancy of the game. Um, and we know Obsidian, their 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 graphics are typically maybe a tear bit better above Bethesda's <laughs> graphics when they make uh, uh, make games. But when I saw the Avowed thing, it was like, okay, yeah, this is what I uh, what I expect. Uh, it looked, I don't see now, I think people were disappointed about the, the scope uh, of the game because it's not as big. It's going to be like Outer Worlds, meaning it's not going to be this massive uh, open world or anything like that. Like a Fallout game, the game... Uh, uh, I can't why well, Avowed is going to have an ending. It, it can it, I can see myself finishing the game within 30 hours or so like that, which is perfectly fine. But what didn't you like about uh what you saw from Avowed? I just felt like what they showed us in that 2019 or I can't remember at this point when these games were 2021, I think. 2021 or 2020. 2021. I felt like what they showed us in 2021 in terms of art style is representation of what I saw in that gameplay trailer. 
Look, does that mean it's going to be bad? No. But if you look at the trailer that they announced about with, it did look like a more dark, grainy art style, kind of like something you'd get from Skyrim. And some of those biomes were very colorful, and that's not a bad thing, but it's just like that's not what I was expecting. No, I understood. I understood. I mean, I saw people online calling it Sea of like saying it looks like Sea of Thieves, which I found baffling. Yeah, I didn't. Yeah, I didn't, I didn't see <laughs> Sea of Thieves in that at all. Like, I don't know. It, I I don't know may, if if I'm just a weird one, but I didn't like. I actually liked it too. Like, I thought it looked pretty damn dope of a game. So I wasn't too sure. Like, yeah, I get. Obviously, it looks different than whatever the first showing was. But when you think about it, its first showing, the first showing wasn't the actual game. Right, the first showing was the actual just the, the the CG trailer that we've all come to loathe and hate, right? So being able to actually see what the game looks like, like I was I was impressed with it, and it looked like basically you know how you were saying like Outer Worlds was a you know colorful, vibrant you know space world. This kind of looked like it's their version of a colorful, vibrant like Oblivion or Skyrim, you know, something yeah. like that. Which which I'm I'm on board with a hundred percent. Um, so. I didn't really take away from that, like, as in, like, I was disappointed in it. I could get, like, why people would be disappointed in it if they're just solely basing it off of what was shown um, previously, but what they shown previously was not the actual game. It was, you but, know, but that, I, that nice I do feel slice. like, to a point, you do have to get a realism in the trailers that that's generally the tone you're going to go for. Like, when you watch The Outer Worlds... It's not like they show the original one had like all these these dark grin tone art styles and then they went to that like from the start it was that art style when they showed the outer worlds the first time. So I mean I, I, again I, I get what you're saying um with that, but my thing is is that I feel like with the, when we first they first revealed about we got to see what we call a concept. And I think what they did was they you know that they executed in the gameplay reveals, like, all right, we got the concept of the hand gesture and the magical, how that's going to work. Uh, the like, obviously, the wielding of uh, weapons. Um, sure, I mean, could maybe overall the game isn't as dark as we have, but maybe do we revisit? Do we re revisit that cave in the actual game where you know, and we have those dark and gloomy uh, moments, possibly, but. Overall, I mean, I, I can't look at it as a negative thing because from that CGI trailer that we saw that that if we're going based off on that, I can't really say what we were going to get as a game. Uh, from the final trailer that we got uh, at the showcase, I kind of have an idea of what we're going to get as a game. And that's why I guess I and, and I'm comfortable with it. Um, the other uh, thing that now obviously uh, Logan, you uh, brought up uh, made headlines uh, clock work revolution. This is in exiles. Uh, game which looks pretty damn good uh got to draw a lot of comparisons to uh a bioshock infinite and um yep. they've come out and said you know this is it's still pretty much an rpg um they didn't give us a release uh date or a release window um any thoughts i mean the game from what we saw it looked like we were seeing game play like cuts it, this wasn't like cgi it's like something that was very much playable i just hope that it is <laughs> i hope that when that game releases that that's that's what that looks like because because you're right that didn't look like a the cg trailer you know that we've we've come to kind of get from microsoft for the most part that actually looked like the game running on whatever system whether it be pc the series x whatever it actually looked like the game running and and potentially what we're going to hopefully get from that game. Um, I'm just hoping that it, it's, it, that's what it sticks with. Um, so Forza showed up. It's getting a lot of, uh, yeah, not even ask me about. Oh, clock so, oh, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Addict. my bad, my bad. A clock tower, uh, Clock Tower Revolution. Clock Tower? Clock, clock Tower. Cl oh, damn. I said Clock Tower. You know what <laughs> no, I'm thinking about? You're, tower getting, you're getting that, uh, that other that Yeah, other Tower one, Tower, yeah, tower game Born. Yeah, there. yeah, yeah. <laughs> clock, <laughs> Clockwork. Attic. Go. Smooth had a long day. <laughs> yeah, I, I think that that studio people are sleeping on. I think if you, if you like hardcore RPGs, 
Like, go play Wasteland 3. I know it's like a turn-based game, but when you play that game, like, the core mechanics of RPG is in that game to a high degree. And when I see when I seen that, all I saw of is they're going to take they're going to take Wasteland Three, amp it up, make it a, a, like a first person, third person type of game. I don't know if it's going to be third person. Give you a bunch of trees that you can do. Give you a bunch of different uh, you know pathways, and then just slap that stuff out. Yeah, man, I I, I can't front. I've never been a I've I I don't think I've done gone through any. Uh, an exile game uh and i and i don't play obviously wasteland i don't even know how to play those games i try every time so what makes me in, um excited for clockwork revolution is that it's different from the games from wasteland it's a it's a first person uh rpg a first person shooter rpg so it's two genres that i can actually that i can actually play i can play first person shooters and i can play rpgs um so I'm in and, and I know they're they're held as like some of the pioneers of the type of the games that they do. And I believe I saw something on Twitter about one of the developers um I think working on a game uh in the same sort of like genre, like back in nineteen ninety eight for like the PC and stuff like that. And it was with some of the people that still work at um in exile and they called it like a, a dream come true. I hope this game comes out next year i feel like i the thing is between you know fable which we're going to talk about uh clockwork and obviously we know for a fact hellblade and evolved they're both there and flight sim 2024 all targeted in 2024 but i hope they can they can that 2024 is those all those games that we saw uh clockwork uh avowed hellblade and and i know it's a, a pipe dream but Fable, I, like I, I'm hoping that's uh, uh, next year. Um, I think, I think Clockwork's probably a 2026 game. Damn. Or 2025, uh, middle 2025. I think Fable is a 2020. Uh, I would say 2025, early 2025. Did, I think they, did see- they not give a year for Fable? I thought they did 2024. No, they didn't. No, they didn't say nothing about Fable. Uh, to me, if it was coming out in 2024, Three uh, 2024, they would have gave it a 2024 release date. Um, that's why I feel like I, I'm just going like Clockwork Revolution. I think that's his name. It seemed like the mo like they ended with it, so I don't feel like there is a lot of development on it. But I, I feel like they're probably just starting, you know, main production on it, or they they haven't started it too long. To me, that's a early 2026 game. Like I, I don't see that coming out next year or the year after that, and plus you got to get realistic. The these studios are starting to get ready to post stuff pretty regularly. They might have to push stuff back just naturally because I, I would assume next year we're going to hear something about the next gears. You know these games are going to be coming out to the point where they're gonna they're gonna fight each other for what quarter. So stuff's going to just naturally get delayed because they can't compete with with each other. I mean that's the ideal it's dream state though, right? Yeah. Like I, I'd, I'd rather have that. Like okay, they're, they're delaying or not even delaying, but maybe just like just internally delaying stuff because of that. You know, don't give us a release date and then delay them, um, because that would yeah. just mean that we're getting a steady stream of content just over and over and over, and just also games with more polish. You know, so that would be the ideal dream state. I think that they would hopefully get to. Yeah. Um. The. I don't like the whole idea of like, you know, the let's like move this game to make room for this game. And then what happens when the game then needs a delay? Do you going to bring that game back? Like <laughs> it's it, it stuff like that where you end up pushing both uh, the you push the original game and then push the game that was supposed to take that game's place. Well, see, here's the thing. Like they used to do the let's launch, let's let's reveal a game like way before it needs to be revealed. Because they needed to show content. They needed to show some form of roadmap. But when you got a lot more games that you can produce, you don't have to do that as much. Because now it's like, okay, I'm not going to show Gears three years in advance because I need to show something on our stage. I have other things I can show. I can literally let Coalition do whatever they want and be like, I'll see you in a couple years when you are probably 12 months from launching. 
Um, I, I think you're going to start seeing more games have concrete release dates unless like like another pandemic or something happened. I think the more games you have and the more studios you have, as long as they're competent studios, you're going to see less and less delays because you're not having to put games out there years and years of, in advance because you actually have other stuff you could show. They, they literally have said at one point in time, there was one year where they showed Halo it wasn't because Halo was ready or even needed to be sure they showed Halo because that was like the biggest game they could possibly produce at that moment. You don't have those kind of those things at the at anymore. Like you can, there's always going to be something you can show now as long as these studios are doing what they're supposed to be doing. Yeah, um, I would say I, I, I get what you're saying. Um, but I, I get I guess I get like frustrated when they you know they, they they're finally hitting the stride where they can show us like these new games and whatnot. And then it's like the situation where it's like, all right, well, you know, they come when they, they come when they come. Um because the the one thing that I found disappointing about the showcase is wasn't really that anything anything cut in the showcase. It was more so it's like, wow, 2023, you know, obviously Starfield is gonna be one of those biggest games and you know it, it's arguably it could be has potential to be the you know game of the generation if they you know execute um but you know you, you think about that you're like all right well starfield technically was supposed to come out last year right so it's like what was actually really planning or targeting 2023 um so and that's where it's like you look at it it's like yeah it's better than 2022 but there's not really outside of the t games that were delayed from 2022 <laughs> into 2023. There's no, there, there was actually no releases for 2023. Hi-Fi outside of Hi-Fi Rush because nobody had no clue about that game. Um, but um, and I, I think that is a prey and, and consequences for, you know, uh, a, a mixture between the pandemic. Mm -hmm. uh, it takes longer to make games in general now. Uh, it's just a bunch of combinations that's come together. Yeah. Uh, incompetent leadership to a degree on some of these studios. Like there's a variety of things. And a lot of the issues can be pointed up to Xbox. They got to tighten the leash on stuff. They got to do better quality control. They got to check on these studios more. Like a lot can be put on Xbox. All right. So the other game, obviously, that was shown for so we saw it again. Um, just checking like the... Um... The temperature online, a lot of people, um, you know, saying the game uh, looks uh, downgraded. Xbox, with their messaging about the game, they're very pretty much blatantly telling you this game is uh, not representative of the final uh, quality. To me, the game looks good. I mean, I think there's you can't mess up a Forza. I haven't seen one bad looking Forza game. Um, we know the game is going to be ha going to have like uh, ray tracing and. Uh, it's going to be 60 FPS, um, 4K. Um, we've uh, seen different tracks. Uh, we've seen like the uh, the improvements that they've made. They gave us like a test run through like the UI and everything like that. Um, the release date, like I said, is October. I'm again, I'm with Logan on the whole release date. I think it's later than I would have wanted it. I was hoping they do like a maybe an August or something like that. But... I was almost wanting like a shadow drop. Dude. Yeah. Like, like, come on, it's Forza. Like it's. It's a it's a known franchise that's been around for ages. Yeah, the fact that it's been delayed and and all this stuff like uh, I was hoping for a way earlier release date than in October. Yeah, being that it was in a developer's direct, it was the only game in the developer direct without a release date. So it's like crap, man. Um, At so, this point, man, I was I think we lucky that game is even hitting this year. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah, I mean, um, but I think I was, and that was the thing, right? the Hellblade thing or the Evolve thing, I was hoping one of those games would, would have been a surprise to close out the year. I was like, all right, if you close out with Starfield, Forza, and, and Hellblade, then hats off. <laughs> like, hats off. But, you know, real, uh, realism sets in, you know, and they're, you know, they're closing the year with um, Starfield and Forza, I think uh, Age of Empires uh, console port. And, um, they got some cool Game Pass drops. Game Pass is going to be very, very, very busy in the month of September uh, between, you know, Payday 3, uh, Liza P, um, Starfield, uh, and I think, uh, what's the uh, part, what, Party Animals? Um, all launching within, like, 
that same uh, period, of course. And then you know, Starfield gets an earlier um, release. Actually, Starfield, you know, if you're if you're playing, you know, the premium version, we're gonna get that as of uh, August thirty first. Um, Fable was uh, open open the show, and uh, by far, you know, outside of the, the Starfield stuff, Fable was my favorite thing shown um and it, it really impressed um a lot of people you know obviously there was things that people tried to point out people didn't like the character uh, the main character the way that she looked but the actual model for the girl is actually actually attractive um the that a lot of people argue like oh this is not gameplay this is not game you know, this is like cgi and it so, like developers several developers came out to like contest that and obviously matt booty and phil spencer you know had their interviews and talk about it but fable still like i'm just like i'm I'm pumped about i'm looking forward to it and just seeing like playground again once proven that they're one of xbox if not the best xbox uh studio and they have an opportunity to like really be that like driving force for xbox and, and fable has an opportunity to be an amazing game so um like a week one week later man your thoughts on uh what we saw from fable um any additional commentary on that who are you talking to whoever wants to chime in well you got to start saying people man <laughs> all right addict you want to chime in on fable <laughs> um i think fable looked good um, I I would have preferred a little bit more on like story elements that was in the trailer. I understand that this was like a tone trailer showing that the tone of the the game still has a, a lot of the British humor in it, but it's just like to me, if you're not a fable head, the trailer probably didn't do nothing for you because that's all it was was like a fable trailer it wasn't a trailer dedicated to like bringing people into to the brand it's like unless you know about the kicking the chickens and stuff a lot of these inside jokes aren't going to really hit very well so i'm assuming you wanted to see more like fable lore based like jack of blades or like some science not, of... not even that like maybe a little bit more uh a more explanation of how they're going to do like cause and effect where it's a, I don't know what I wanted to see. What I saw was fine. It's just I feel like if you're not a fable head and you played all these fables, you're gonna look at that. And besides, oh, it looks graphically good. What did you really gain from that fable trailer? Like not much. Yeah, I think they wanted to make a statement. Playground wanted to show that you know they can do something other than racing and that they can make a great looking game and it's running on a, the the forts attack um i like i get what you're saying if you're a fan of fable we gotta think about it fables really old at this point right i mean the last one came out 2012 so if you were in your uh if you were in your like you know 20s or whatever playing this one uh you're in your you know 30s now or if you were in your teens you're in your 20s at the end of the day i think they're the point of revealing Fable is is almost like revealing a new IP uh, to new Xbox customers. It's like, oh, this game looks good. You know what I mean? I haven't and, had a new Fable since the 360 era. Yeah. And then also you can consider this, right? Um, people, I, I look at it and like, oh, people are playing, you know, at Harry Potter, the game looks good. And, and that may serve as a reminder of, of F Harry Potter. And, and, and Harry Potter was uh, received pretty well logan your thoughts on this uh, uh fable showcase i know you uh mentioned it early and how you um liked it but just wanted to uh, take a, a bit of a deeper dive into it um i mean i i liked it i i thought it set the the tone for basically what fable is right it's a quirky rpg that has a lot of jokes and kicking chickens and and stuff like that um uh, the only thing and, and I see a lot of the the discourse out there about it's not the actual game like gameplay stuff like that, and I kind of wish that they would have done a little bit better messaging of maybe what the actual gameplay was. I could kind of tell obviously when you're watching it. I don't think there was any time in the trailer that you know there was like the combat of the gameplay and stuff like that, but I could tell that 
the gameplay that the developers were talking about is essentially what looked like kind of like cinematic. It was the like, fireball cu- scene, like cuts, and I, yeah, like the well, like just like when you when you were the really tall, you know, tall like tiny person, and there was a big dude, and yeah, like, that, that kind of looked I'll like jumping through the fire and stuff. Yeah, like that looked like like the cin- cinematic like gameplay. I guess I would say right, not actually like going out into the world and exploring and stuff. And, and as Attic just said, you know, throwing the, the fireball, like, I believe that that's the actual gameplay. Like, that's the actual game running, right? Um, I just wish that they would have had a little bit more... I want to see what the what the world's going to look like, right? I want to see what... And, and maybe that's just because things aren't ready, so they just want to show what is ready. Um but because I, I love Fable, like I played Fable 2, Fable 3, I did the Anniversary Edition. Um, so for me, like it's been a very long time coming um, when I was when they first announced that Playground was because they, they actually hinted at Playground working on Fable back in 2018. Um, I remember that they they, they there was rumors that they were yeah. going to work on an RPG before it got out that it was Fable. Yeah, that was in yeah. back in 2017 well, when that happened. Yeah. Was it was it 2018 or 2017? I I know that they they said it Playground was working on an RPG, which then everybody kind of already knew hey, it's it's Fable, right? Um just yeah. the way that they that they kind of announced that Playground was working on it. Um, it was rumored so, that the Fable project was the only reason that they uh, that Playground agreed to be bought. Hey, I'll, I'll I'll take it, man, because I, I've I've been in the need for Fable um, for for a very long time. Um, I just love the the humor, the setting, the combat, the exploration, the charm that Fable has. Um, that, that series is just very very unique in all those realms. Um, I just I just want something like more firm. Like I, I like if they would have you know come at a twenty twenty four um, you know release window of a year. Or, you know, just something a little bit more tangible. Because um, when I thought that they were opening with Fable, I was like, holy shit, like, it, like this is, like, going to be huge. And while the trailer was huge, I still kind of was, even though I'm excited, I didn't feel like I had too much tangible um, from that trailer. To you know what they're going to gonna really. do, don't you? They're going to, you know how Starfield was, was combined with the showcase this year? Next year's showcase is like going to find a fable, like a fable direct. Hey, yeah, and I mean, and, if, and if that's the okay release because, date at the end of it. Hey, I mean, if if that's what they do next year, I'm okay with it because I, I it, really, it, very, I'm very much like the um, Starfield I'm, direct, like yeah, how that was set up. That was dope. Um, yeah, like getting like a very big deep dive into the game, showing all the aspects only, of it. Like, like I love that. That the Starfield only direct. criticism I will give them is next time you have a one more thing, which was technically like Clockwork it. Revolution, mm-hmm. don't... You need to set it up as a one more thing. Like, they, they should have separated the two shows to some degree. I, I don't know how they would have did it. Maybe have, like, an, like, another clock comes up where it's, like, five minutes before the show starts. And then he should have said, but before we get to the Starfield Direct, I have one more thing for you. Because it... And then show Clockwork Revolution. Because it kind of took that that drop mic moment that you're normally used to getting at the end. Cause that's when they announced fable. That's when they announced Redfall. Like it took that away where he's like, the one more thing is the star field direct. We knew about like, it's just like, nah, it's like, you know, they should have came out there and said, we have one more thing for you. Then we're going to get onto the star field direct. That's where you show that, that game. And then it goes into like a, a two minute timer going into the star field direct. I'm gonna say this: If you said there's gonna be a Fable Direct next year um, to uh, send off the Xbox showcase next year, then Fable is coming out next holiday. <laughs> there's no way you do a direct for a game that's gonna come out in like I don't know quarter two of 2025 or like quarter three of 2025. Uh, See, um, I I think you're gonna start seeing these games. Like we want all we want the gameplay of Hellblade, all this. I don't think that Microsoft's going to do stuff like that anymore. I think they're going to save a lot of this information for these directs, these giant breakdowns. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and, fair enough. And, you yeah. know, I, I think for the most part, you're going to get more directs like we did at the beginning of the year, mm-hmm. where it's just showing us like four, ga- like four games and they're showing us a lot for it. And then 
around E3, if it's a big enough game, they're going to combine it with that showcase like they did with Starfield. And it, that's going to be towards games that's heavenly, has a lot of stuff in it, and you, can, you can't realistically show with another three games. I think you're going to... And at the beginning of the year, you're going to see a Hoblade, a Vowed, and, and you know some indie games or something. And then maybe you even see something fable related in there and it's going to once you get to the showcase next year they're going to go to that straight to the showcase like really break down fable and then at the end have like a, like a march release date or something yeah i mean i can see that uh, uh, a showcase uh in a developer direct next year next january that covers avowed hellblade 2 and maybe flight sim 2024 um, I'm not sure what else is coming in um, that year. I think whatever the next big game at that point would be covered in uh, the the showcase. But I think Hellblade and Avowed really should be covering the first two quarters of next year. I don't know which one comes first. Uh, maybe it's... Uh, I would say it's Avowed. Because to me, Hellblade... Avowed showed a lot for that little trailer. Yeah. Uh, it, it, I think... I don't know. Who knows? At this point, both those games could be realistically almost out the door, and they're internally deciding who goes first right now. Yeah. Like, so at that point, you do so. Uh, I mean, give one of those games in uh, February, and then the next game you give at the uh, like the probably. Uh, I, I'm looking at a, a February and a, a a May release probably. Okay. Um. So, about right before E3, like right before their next showcase. Okay. Uh, but I think I do think that, they need to one of those those early because you know how February usually come out stomping, like uh, for game releases. One of those games got to come out in February, February or March, man. Yeah, yeah. E- even though that I, I disagree with how they presented us avowed back mm-hmm. then compared to what we got in that trailer, mm-hmm. I still think that's that's. 89, 91, 90, 91, 92 game all day long. Oh, okay. As far as a meta score. Yeah, it's still going to be highly rated, highly loved because Obsidian really hasn't made anything bad. True. Yeah, they haven't. They've been on they've been on a roll. Yeah. Uh, Even Fendiment and Grounded turned out to be successful. So yeah, they, those were like high eighty games, right? Uh, I know Pentiment mm-hmm. was like around like I think eighty eight, eighty nine, whatever. Um, so now we have you know the Starfield showcase, which uh, one of the best you know video game breakdowns, and you know this is coming after you know uh, years of different forms of state of plays, you know, um, and other demonstrations. This is one of the best uh, breakdown. Um, of a video game that I've seen, it was about I think forty-two minutes in runtime, and it gave us the information that we needed. And they were kind enough on YouTube to put like a, a timestamp for each part of the game that matters, whether it was gameplay, uh, uh, story, um, uh, space combat, base building. Um, I just want to hear your your thoughts, Logan, on this Starfield because uh, you you said I your mic cut out when you mentioned the the, the version that you pre ordered. Uh, uh, oh, I didn't realize that my mic cut out. So the, I, I'm getting the collector's edition. Um, is that so the? I, I, I got the the three the three hundred dollar edition that comes with the the fancy the watch and the hundred dollar premium edition of the game. Um, basically, what I was was getting at is like this is the first time that I've been super excited for like an xbox game right um so i'm going all in also uh weird fact about me that probably most of you guys don't know i love watches um i actually have quite a few fancy expensive watches so buying paying 300 dollars for a watch really isn't uh honestly too expensive um compared to some watches that i've had um and so that was just like, hey, I want this. I want this. Yeah, I, watch, dude. I'm, I'm ready for this game. I want the, the premium edition to get the five days early access and also get the um, the first add on pack, you know, that the first expansion that they're going to be releasing to in the premium uh, pack as well. Um, I'm definitely going to be looking into taking some PTO. This game seems absolutely uh, insane um, scope wise and size wise. 
Um, I was really I liked the Starfield Direct because it, it showed a lot of things that last year I was a little bit skeptical on. Um, big thing last year that they showed is I was not a super big fan of how the actual combat and gameplay looked. Um, I thought it was it looked a little rough last year when they showed it, and it looks like they improved like the actual combat and the actual like like stuff that you'll do to fight people, right? Um, it looks a lot better uh, combat wise. Uh, also, like uh, when they showed off the fact that you can go from you know flying your ship around and actually like board other ships. Yeah, that, and, that's what I knew for a fact. I was I'm like, be a space I was like. Yo, I was like, I could board in that the way, like I forget what that lady's name is. It was a developer, like, but like that whole segment, you know, kind of, <laughs> I, I laughed so hard at that segment where she's like, I want to board people's ships and steal. I hope all their you can like negotiate with them, like, yeah, like you'll be she, flying at them, it, it, like kind of like those like Star Wars Galactic, like if you got like a high thing. enough skill, tr- like if you got like a high enough, like it's like just skill, let me like board you and I let you live. No, yeah. okay, now I'm gonna come on, there, I'm gonna kill everybody. <laughs> But like the fact that like you could steal like the whole entire ship's like sandwiches, I was like, dude, that's so absurd. But um, so like that kind of won me over. Like be being like a space pirate, I think it's gonna be really cool because you could either destroy the ships or board the ships. I also liked the um, like how you could build your ship, right? You could build it, customize it, um, do what kind of wacky designs you want with it, and kind of really make it your ship by how you want to build it. Um, and the the other thing was I liked. Like that, you could have like your own crew, right? Um, I loved, I loved Mass Effect. I love one of the best things about Mass Effect was getting on your ship, having those conversations with your crew members, you know, doing different stuff uh, with them. So like being able to see like your crew on your deck, and you'll probably you know develop relationships and stuff with them, and maybe be able to go do certain uh, quests and stuff for you know your crew members. Like I thought that that was a a super dope showing of it. Um, also, like I loved how vast the towns look they looked way more improved over last year um i liked the the western town i think was probably my favorite uh when i was looking at it i was like dude i want to be like a a space cowboy right um get decked out in space cowboy gear and 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 go out there and be a pirate at the same time um i'm just pumped for it right like i i can't express like it's probably my most anticipated title this year um and i thought it was very good showing it 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 Got rid of a lot of the doubts that I had from it from last year, one hundred percent. Yeah, uh, Starfield. Like I said, it looks good. Like I enjoyed every bit of the combat, what, even the melee, the 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 hand to hand combat. Uh, they showed off stealth. Though the boarding uh, was uh, pretty cool, being that you can board a ship and then there will still be because it's one the, the crazy thing is the game is so many systems and so many mini games in one. So you when you're in space, right? It's just almost a space combat game right that you're if you, yeah. you stay up there and fight all uh, all night until you decide to land right and then the fact that you can you know approach a ship get on the ship and then the ship itself is inside is pretty much a level with people in it that you can obviously fight and um you know and conversate mm-hmm. with i think that would be yeah <laughs> my bad but um i think that's a uh, also dope and there was like this moment in the game where the dude uh tossed a little grenade inside this room they were in and they shut the door <laughs> um that was like one of my uh favorite moments of the trailer uh todd howard i think in the interview i think this came i don't know if this came up in the direct or in the interview afterwards but he talked about like if you are like a certain like religion in the game right that you can literally you know based off that like avoid like, fights. Way out yeah you can talk <laughs> yeah uh, and those are those like those, those cool RPG elements. Now you guys know, and especially you, Logan, know all the types of games I would play and won't play. Uh, I'm not the um, obviously I haven't like really like put myself in like a, a Bethesda game like the Skyrim's and the Falls. I played them, but I've never like saw them all the way through. So mm-hmm. Starfield is really like my opportunity to try to get on because it's a new IP. Right, I'm. I don't have to anything to learn from. Right, um, and we get, and I can get in at the same time as everyone else, and and, and pretty much uh, go uh, from there. But they have a lot of uh, things going on um, in this game that's very impressive, and I really hope uh, that they um, do execute 
I saw like the I've ordered the headphones and which is Attic is currently wearing. Um, I've also ordered the controller, uh, so I'm expected to have those uh, next week, which Attic currently has. I tried to finesse the retailers and see if they can you know hand it to me, but um, I gotta wait for them to come. So I think awesome, awesome controller design, awesome headset. I'm gonna give my classic headsets uh, to my son. Um, since he likes um, wearing the headphones when he games, so I'll give these to my son while I get the uh, get the Starfield ones. Uh, the game has been, you know, obviously doing well. The collector's edition that Logan was managed to achieve is completely sold out. Like, yeah. and that 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 comes with the game, right? What does it come? All, yeah, does you it get the with? you get the premium edition of the games, so like the the hundred dollar version. So you get the game, um, which 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 comes with the premium add on pack. So like the you know, whatever they're selling separately for I think it's like forty bucks, where you get the five day early access and then you get the um, the first expansion and then the premium edition stuff that comes in the three hundred dollar edition too. They better come with it for three hundred dollars. Three hundred dollars. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> for three hundred dollars, they better hand me the controller with it. Like, jeez. <laughs> yeah, I thought uh, it was you were going to get a bundle that included. The controller, the headset, the watch, wow. the in the game. Um, no, 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 unfortunately, yeah, no, unfortunately, that would be that'd that be dumb expensive it. too. That you're looking at a price of a console. Yeah, because like the <laughs> the headset's what 120 and the controller's 80, so yeah. that's 200 right there. Um, oh yeah, no, yeah. but like that, that's just how I mean, it's just how excited I am. I don't I don't buy too many collectors editions. Um, like I might buy like one a year or maybe two, if that. Um, so it's just a game that I'm super pumped for. And so I'm just like, I, I want it. And then that, that watch is really what I wanted the most <laughs> was that damn watch. So I'm like, like I said, it's not the, the most expensive thing I've not the most expensive watch I've ever bought. So that's where, I, that was where I was able to, to kind of justify it at. <laughs> That's that, that's true. That's funny. So you're like, yeah, you can justify the you know the, uh, the watch purchase. Yeah, I can justify the watch because <laughs> yeah. I was like, I was like, well, I'm getting a hundred dollar edition of the game, so it's only two hundred dollars for the watch, and I've spent more than two hundred dollars on a watch before, so that's where I was. That's where I was easily easily able to justify it, right? That's how I was able to spin it on my mind. Now the game. Yeah. Go ahead, my bad. I was gonna say, um, the biggest question is like, what if this game does? Everything that they claim it does it well. Do you think this can get game of the year? I think it's uh I think it's it's definitely gonna be a contender for yeah. it. I, I definitely think it, it's it's just gonna be hard to I don't know, it's something with even though I I never played it, I know um Zelda um Tears of the Kingdom has the what's the the fanfare or the I'm trying. I'm trying to think of the wording for it. Real with you, the the hype for Zelda already kind of died. I don't even see people talking about it anymore. I huh? think. I think. Um, I said it's on Twitter. People don't like that. I said it, but I think, for example, right, like right, the aesthetic. No, no, I said people. Don't, I said this on Twitter, and I don't think people like that. I said it. Um, oh, was that. For example, God, off Chris. <laughs> yeah, God of War 2018, right? Obviously, it was like, you know, big deal. It was a, it was a shoe in for game of the year. A couple years later, Ragnarok comes out, and it's essentially the same game, right? But it's still great, still scores high. It's going to get nominated for game of the year. But the Elden Ring was such of a hit and a different experience, a breakthrough hit that it was it was ultimately it beat out God of War uh, for Game of the Year because God of War is familiar already, and I feel like I see the same thing happening with Zelda. I mean, you have Breath of the Wild; it was Game of the Year, great. I don't you don't give the same game <laughs> back to uh, back to back Game of the Years. The, I just don't see. I think Starfield is gonna if they execute it right, right? If they if if it does what it's supposed to do, it, it, uh, Starfield it scores a. 91 92 whatever if it does if it scores in the 90s i feel like it's winning the game of the year uh no hands down i feel like starfield is going to be just new enough new uh different enough so much of a hit that it by default it gets game of the year because 
Tears of the Kingdom, been there, done that. God of War suffered the same thing. The only one that was able to um, really uh, survive that was The Last of Us, uh, right? With the part one and, and part two. Uh, but they were also damn near seven years apart. Yeah, so, they're, they're, they're yeah, very far apart. Yeah, they were really far apart. And, and, and Last of Us 2 was much of a different game. It had a lot of gap, uh, a lot of a, a huge difference from the first game in terms of gameplay, things you can do, the way it looked, than what uh, Ragnarok to God of War 2018 did and what Tears of the Kingdom to Breath of the Wild did. Uh, I think Starfield it, it could be, and I and I know I have like the stigma on me, so I, it's like, so I don't want to like, <laughs> you know, curse the game, but uh, I think. <laughs> I think it can win a game of the year, and if it and if it scores ninety or better, I think it's going to win game of the year. My opinion. I guess, I guess we'll just have to wait and wait and see, because for some reason I've always felt like it. It always seems like the the games that release later in the year sometimes always seem like they're the ones that get snuffed um, for that for the game of the year. Uh, contenders, and I'm not 100 percent sure why. It always feels like that way. You're right. Um, but on Starfield side, it's releasing in September, early September, and then for people like yeah, you, so that, that's you, what I'm, <laughs> I'm hoping a little. It, it'll get a, it'll get a little bit more time in people's hands to really, yeah. hopefully, maybe leave that impression, right? Because um, God of War seemed like it was going to be like a. a almost like a shoe in but since it was like five days before the, the the cutoff of the game awards happened um it seemed like it didn't have that that big impression yet to to the industry where elden ring was around for a lot longer yeah absolutely and you know with people like you who got the that collector's edition get to play the game as early as august 31st which That's is not i mean not far dude yeah. you gotta really think about that we're almost at the end of uh, end of sep or not September, uh, end of June. Yeah, so that means like public like, previews. That's like two two months, which I'm so the public reviews got to go up before the five day the five day early access. You think right? I, I all right. So here's what can happen: either it has to go up uh, either by September first, the day that the early people get it, or by the release date. Um, I think that can. Uh, I, I don't know I how big the game is. I mean to get because like yeah you gotta think if this game's as massive as is what they're talking like mm -hmm. you gotta give people time like, like yeah. you don't need like a like a month you gotta need a yeah. month to review this so is this game really gonna be in people's hands and, so you gotta and, think about it. the previews that haven't even quite have August? like IGN first still gonna have to is definitely gonna get this game so what's that gonna be next month like when they start doing the the actual previews that where, where the game is like uh -oh. you know how when the game gets close enough to the point where it's like okay we're seeing more of it and stuff like that that hasn't happened yet that has to happen but, I'm assuming soon go ahead addict my bad the only thing I'll say is like you you'll hear soon about that okay 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 sounds good to me now Logan yeah you you were impressed about what you saw from the game um. Mm -hmm. How did the 30 FPS cap hit you? Uh, being you're a you're a Series X owner, you're a Series S owner. Uh, you have PC, of course, right? Um, no, I don't have a PC powerful enough uh, to run shit. It can barely render out video <laughs> in stream. So I don't I don't have no powerful PC, and I don't I don't plan on investing into a a powerful PC. So I will be I have the Series X version of the game. Okay. Um, uh, pre-ordered so i will be playing at the i guess you know the 30 fps right mm -hmm. so is that, is that what we're hitting yeah 30 fps man what your take your thoughts on that did that did when you when that news came out right did that change or impact your thoughts on the game it didn't impact my pre-order i will say that <laughs> how about that <laughs> like i was like i'm still pre-ordering this fucking game um i don't i don't uh, care um I, I'm not gonna lie. Like, 30 FPS is not my ideal state to play the game. Um, I don't think that with this with this console and with you know it was supposed to be the 60 120 FPS 
big monster of a machine. Um, I'm I'm still feeling like we're kind of getting screwed out of that uh, that dream. I guess we were we were sold on on the, on this console a little bit um, because this is the second high tier uh, profile game uh, coming to Xbox exclusively that's hitting this 30 FPS cap. Now, I will say, unlike Redfall. Um, which I did not like Redfall. I thought Ooh. it was a absolute trash game. Um, when I'm actually looking at Starfield, um, I can kind of better understand the limitations that the game might be having, you know, hardware wise to hit that 60 FPS. Um, am I am I still happy about it? No. Um, I hope that they'll be able to uh one day you know later down the road be able to get it to where it can hit that 60 fps and i I imagine we'll probably get a 60 fps patch somewhere down the road i don't think that starfield is going to be a game that's capped at that 30 its whole entire life on the xbox series x um i i just don't believe that um for for launch for launch yes um for the long term of the game i don't think it will um so I, I am bummed about that, but it's still not going to really impact my uh, decision to play the game, enjoy the game, um, stuff like that. Because regardless of how I feel about 30 FPS, it still hasn't stopped me from playing games. Like I played Gotham Knights, um, I played Redfall, I played uh, A Plague's Tale Requiem when that game came out at 30 FPS. Like I'll still play it. Um, and I still live by the fact that a good game is still a good game regardless of its frame rate. Um, obviously, some of those games like Gotham Knights, I did not think that that game was a good game. Um, I thought it was pretty trash. Um, 30 FPS was not the uh, issues that I had with it. Same with Redfall. Um, 30 FPS was the least of Redfall's issues. So for me, um, the frame rate really is not that super big of a deal to me. Um, just because as long as the game's like solid and fun and enjoyable, like I'm not that big of a stickler for it to have to be at that 60 FPS. It's obviously my preferred frame rate that I would rather have, um, but it's not going to deter me away from playing a game. But a bad game will deter me from playing a game. So as long as Red or St- as long as Starfield's not a bad game, I'm going to be playing a game. Yeah. Um. I'm going to say this, right? Um, The 30, uh, the whole thing about 30, and I know I've been on Twitter talking all types of shit about 30, about (laughs) frame rate. It it is what it is. It is what it is. It's, (laughs) it's my L, but, but right. The problem was for me, I'd never really expected star. Like, so here's, here's where I got, I kind of got a little bit spooked about frame rate. And I was like, all right, where, where I accepted that, Hey, is this a chance Starfield may not be 60 FPS, right? Because I had to, con- I, all things considered, uh, Flight Sim. That's all I can, Flight Sim is, it's not, it, Flight Sim, they enable like the VR, so which unlocks the frame rate, and that they don't cap the frame rate if you're on VR display, which allows the frame rate to hit a certain point. And I think at most, I felt maybe that's what they would do with Starfield. It was like either it's going to be 30 FPS or if you have VR, you can get higher. And I figured they would just unlock the frame rate if they uh, did that. So I was like, I don't expect it to be 60 FPS. However, I think what happened was, and I was ready for the Starfield 30 FPS news. The problem was I had 110% expected Redfall to be 60 FPS. And that's what that's what messed it up. Because I was like, now, it's one thing if Redfall is 60 and Starfield is 30, I can, tr- I can understand. You're not going to hear a peep out of me. It was the fact that Redfall... Decided to be 30 FPS. It's like, well, shit, Starfield, it's likely going to be 30 FPS. So that means both your 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 new next gen games are mm-hmm. at last gen frame rates. But the thing is, Starfield was going to get the pass because we knew it was going to be a super ambitious game. Now, shout out to ACG. We got to get him on a podcast once. I think somebody asked him a question. I'm still on this uh, from Bless Red. Uh, episode uh, 398, he said he read a comment. From an actual developer, but not from you know Bethesda, but from an, another developer about the reasons that Starfield is 30 FPS on the Xbox Series X and Series S. Uh, he mentions instancing inventory prop management system and how Starfield handled its procedural generation as well. 
Double the FPS means double the performance on most available systems that would need to output that. And most developers that are in that are in the industry expect the Starfield to only be 30 FPS because of these reasons. Um, yeah, we all know Starfield is very, very ambitious. We, like I said, you look at uh, Flight Sim, which is a very big game, like very mm. detailed game, and like, and it crushes most PCs. And like I said, you'd be lucky if you can get, you know, above like you know 40 FPS on the Xbox, you know, Series X with uh, VR. So Starfield again, I it, it is what it is. It's like. I don't think it bothered me. Yeah, it sucks. Um, it, it, and I think it only sucks for the, the sake that I have to go on Twitter every day and I have to argue with someone, right? So that's why it really sucks. I, uh, but as far as the game, all the years we've been playing, we, we've all you know played throughout the Xbox One, PS4 generation. 30 FPS was the, sta- <laughs> was, was, was the standard, right? Uh, and games weren't as ambitious. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah. So I'm, I'm, I'm not... Mad, I don't think it changed my mind. Uh, I will say, you know, I'm gonna try to give the run on my PC, give the game a run on my PC. But historically, because people are under this weird impression that just because you play a game on PC, it's just gonna run the best, it's gonna run 60 FPS by yeah, default. Yeah, it's yeah. the biggest lie <laughs> and misconception that people are running with, dude. I don't know, like I I had struggles running Spider-Man better than my the ps5 counterpart i've had trouble with ghostwire tokyo every time it rained i have and redfall sucks on my pc i can't play that 60 fps it, it just doesn't hit i can't get it, yeah. and redfall doesn't look good so i'm like no this is redfall, redfall is not a game that like when i look at redfall i'm like this game should not have any issue hit yeah because, because i i I, pl- I put a decent chunk of i didn't beat redfall uh, Neither have way, I. I, I. I won't beat Redfall because the the issues that I have with that game is just a, fundamentally it's just a bad game. Mm. Um, I did not enjoy the seven hours that I was digging into it, and I I literally because I don't think we had this uh, conversation because this is when you switch. Um, but when Redfall came out, um, I had a I had a review code for Jedi Survivor um, that I was doing for, for level one, yeah. and so I'm like sitting there. I'm like, okay, well, here's Redfall. I'm going to boot it up. I tried it. I Literally on launch day, I put six hours into it, and I sat there, and, and I this is like one of the first times I've ever done this. Mm-hmm. I said what I, I said this to myself. I'm like, what the hell am I doing? I have a review code for Jedi Survivor that I could be playing that game instead of playing this game. <laughs> and so I, I, stopped, I stopped playing Redfall, and I went back to Jedi Survivor to finish my review for it. Not to um, mention... They gave us Redfall like mad late too. Yeah, the day yeah. of, like damn near the day of, I think almost the day of a release or like within. Yeah, that, it was like a, it was like a day and a half, two yeah. days. Mm-hmm. But so, um, so like that game when I look at it, like that game should. I don't see how it's not hitting at sixty FPS, and and I was and I talked about it when they were like, oh, okay, we're gonna do a patch later. Right, and here we are, almost two months since that game came out. Right, absolutely. Yeah, uh, no pat, no, no patch. patch. Um, they, they said that they're still working on it. They did uh, some big update the other day, which I I read stuff on it. I'm like, uh, you, you still didn't just fix it. Like you still didn't make a good game. Yeah. Uh, regardless of what you what you patch into it or whatever you do with it. Um. So I'm I'm still not gonna go back to it. Mm-hmm. But uh, Starfield, like the the only thing that irked me about Starfield was that interview that um Todd Howard had. Where he said that he didn't want to, um, what was what was the wording that he said? He didn't, he didn't want to compromise, compromise fidelity. Compromise fidelity. The the thing that irks me about that, and I, and I I understand that that's I don't know how much weight that that holds to it, right? I'm not a developer, I don't know, but um, any time that I've ever had the option to pick either fidelity mode or performance mode, me as a consumer has always picked performance mode. I could give two shits about the fidelity if the game doesn't feel good to run. Um, now, certain games obviously have better performance modes than others. Um, I played Jedi Survivor in performance mode, um, and that was a little bit rough with its dips, 
you know. Um, but I still like the combat still felt a lot better in that performance mode than it did when I switched to the fidelity locked at, th- at 30 frames a second, you know, with that game. Cause it's, you're being a, you're a Jedi. It's got fast paced combat. You have to have precision movements um, and timing with blocking. Cause you know, it's, it's not really a dark souls game, but it's, it's got kind of that concept when you're fighting like bosses and stuff, you have your, you know, the, the gameplay is very much like dark souls s type gameplay. So it just feels better when you're doing combat at 60 FPS. Now with Starfield, when it's it's not it's a first person game, but it's not a first person shooter, right? You're not playing do, you're not Doom, you're not Wolfenstein, you're not like crazy hectic, you know, combat, right? You're gonna have your combat moments and stuff, but more than likely a lot of the a lot of the chunk of the game is gonna be exploring, you know, roaming around, rummaging for supplies, uh, resources, you know, going through and doing quests, talking to characters. So like. I don't really feel like that it's going to have that like fast paced combat other than you're going to have like your areas where you do have the combat and you're going to have fighting enemies and stuff. But I think that it's going to feel good at that 30 FPS, but I'm still upset that Todd is taking it upon himself to really pick what, what I would want. Right. Um, the, yeah. Him saying he didn't want to sacrifice the fidelity. You're not sacrificing the fidelity. It's me as a consumer. That is. Right. And and so I'm just a little upset by by the, how he worded that, because I was like, if you put an FPS mode in there, I'm picking it over yep. fidelity any day. I just am. I, I think the uh, fidelity comment, though, I don't I don't I don't know if he's referring to graphics. That's the thing or like resolution. I think he's likely referring to I think he's referring to resources. Yeah. He taught Howard and Bethesda are very well known. To like, they they have a lot of attention to detail, stuff on the tables, everything's interactable. You know, regardless what his opinions are and what they aren't are, at the end of the day, you give us that opinion, that option. I don't care if you have to drop that bastard down to nine hundred p. You give us that option. If I want to run that shit at nine hundred p at sixty frames, give me that option to run that shit at nine hundred p sixty frames. I get it. You know. Mm-hmm. This isn't the game he wants to play. But guess what, Todd? You're not selling it to you. You're selling it to me. So give me the option to play your game the way I want to play your game. Yeah. So my thing is, what if if you had a performance mode, but you couldn't, like, stack devices? Like, you couldn't stack a bunch of bread on a table or a bunch of guns? Like, cause That's each, fine, because I ain't doing thing, that shit anyway. Each thing has its own system and in, in, in way of just messing around with it. Like and that all that that has to fit into the frame budget, and I'm not going to talk like I know what the hell I'm talking about in terms of like how people get 60 FPS and 120 FPS and stuff like that. But all that stuff that's going, I mean, it, it costs something, right? In this performance, you, I don't. I'm not a developer. I can't tell you exactly how to make it done. But that's not my job. My job is to buy their game. I'm most likely going to play this on PC because I do have a 3060 Ti. That ain't doing shit. <laughs> well, I'll play the game. I'll play the game on low settings if I have to. But I'll, I'll t- it, I'll, it's just I'm gonna tell you right now, my bad, addict. I'm telling you right now, and to anybody, and I, and I can't wait because everybody thinks. Did, did they drop the specs for you? Yes. Or no? Yes. Yes. What's, it, the, and, what's uh, the what's the minimum? The mi- well, it requires an SSD, unlike Ratchet and Clank. I have an the, SSD. The minimum. They haven't announced the specs though for Ratchet yet officially. The it the minimum. I, I've seen people. I've been. I've seen people throwing those out there. They're going off of a third party website that doesn't have the actual stuff. Like it doesn't actually have the legitimate requirements from Insomniac or the Nexus for that game. What, what, what are the specs? Speed All right, I'm t- I'm, put, I'm putting it up right now. All right, so uh, the PC recommendations for Starfield, right? And I must go with the minimum, right? Because <laughs> this is where it's kind of. All right, so minimal requirements is a from a from a GPU standpoint, it's a, G, a 1070 Ti. Okay, Which so I got way above that. Continue. Yeah, yeah but <laughs> all right, continue. So it's a 1070 Ti for the minimum. So and then no, you're I, you're you're talking about and you're talking about Ratchet, right? Now. No, I'm talking about Starfield. Or no, tar, so Starfield's only that minimum. That's the minimum. 
Just, just give you a heads up. Just a few months ago, I had a 980 Ti. Right. What? What? what, The the memory 16 gig. What do they recommend for the CPU? CPU for minimum requirements for the CPU would be a Ryzen 2600X or i7 6800K. Um, That's actually a pretty pretty heavy CPU requirement for a minimum. Yeah, it's it's a C. It's looking like a CPU heavy game. And 16 gig of I mean, RAM. I mean, I can run that. I, I, I have enough RAM. I can run the game. It won't be at, like, all the bells and whistles, but I guarantee you I'll run the game. Now, the recommended specs where everybody wants to try to get better than an Xbox, right? They want to get better than an Xbox, or, or at least on par with an Xbox, uh, is a Ryzen 5 3600X or an Intel i5 10... Um, 106k or 100 600k whatever i don't know how you read that um the graphics card is a nvidia rtx 2080 for recommended yeah 20. so I, i'm good in that too you have a 3060 ti okay and what's what, what gigabyte is that card eight gigs uh, i think yeah <laughs> this is definitely going to be one of those games that require or that you ain't that you're gonna to get the most out of it you want at least 16 so gigs have, so my cpu is a ryzen 7 5800x uh i'll have to look at what my uh I'll just keep going uh, so i'm going to tell you this right now that the average pc build is going to average about 47 frames per second I'm just saying, like, sure, there's going to be people who are going to get, going to get 60 and above and whatnot. But the average person, this game isn't going to be like, oh, my God, I, I got a PC, so I'm just going to play it at max settings. No, a lot of people, this is going to be a game that performs under 60 FPS. You're going to be watching those Digital Foundry videos or those other videos where they, you know, they're playing the game and you see the frames moving up and it's always going to be at around in like in the fifties, but they're like, Oh, compared to this, compared to this, compared to this. And it's always going to be below 60 FPS. I'm that's what I'm willing to actually guarantee somebody with a 4090. I don't care. I'm talking about with somebody with these regular cards, these 2080s and 3070s. Like I said, I'm willing to give it a try on my PC because my PC is, it, it, it's better than my Xbox for sure, but it doesn't turn in consistent performance. Like my, xbox does so um yeah in the uh, oh wait there is there an ultra requirement yet yeah i mean not even gone fully through the list <laughs> no 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 i think they're just uh, sp- uh speculating with the ultra because that's not been uh revealed but i'm just saying yeah that a lot of people like i said they want to you know they're going to pop all this stuff and there's been times, literally, for example, I had a better time with Ghostwire Tokyo on Xbox than I did on PC because of the, the, the because of the inconsistent performance that I would get. Here's the thing, though. I got no problem dropping those settings, like not at even a little bit. And, and to, to me, achieve 59 FPS? <laughs> to, huh? to achieve to, to achieve above 30 fps but not quite yes 60. i have no problem dropping that shit down a medium low like none of that shit bothers me like okay. i know you guys like the the to, uh, the max settings it, 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 none of that shit bothers me okay okay well um you know, i'll go back and forth because i it, it, i will have access to both mm-hmm. but it, it's just like as long as there's cross save, if there's not cross save, then I'm picking one and sticking with it. Oh, I mean, they've been under the Xbox umbrella. If you do I think that, we'll get if the you cross do the PC saves. version that's not on Steam. You'll probably have cross save, right? Yeah, if yeah. If you do Steam, then that's yeah. it. Then yeah. But if you do the Xbox version, you definitely the the Xbox. You'll have that that ability to bring your save over yeah. from PC to Xbox. Yeah. So and I plot. I typically do all my uh, PC games like the Xbox, with the exception of obviously. Um, uh, Ghostwire did I buy off? So somebody gifted that. You did on Ghostwire Steam. on Steam, I believe. Uh, yeah, I did that on Steam. Um, but yeah, man. Um, like I said, I'm not mad at it, and, and a lot of people are mad that I'm not mad at it. So they're gonna keep showing me my receipts of all the stuff that I said about 30 FPS, and I said that out of anger because I was so mad at Redfall 
Um, and at that time, like everything I was saying about it was correct. I didn't, you know, at that time complete a plague's tale because um, I didn't play Gotham Knight uh, uh, because of it. It was just hard to like settle after being like playing those games. Now, again, I haven't played a game like Starfield since this, these consoles came out. I haven't played like a, a the, the I mean the biggest game I probably played at that point in time. And would have been Assassin's Creed, like, like you know what I mean, like, in those games are you know obviously you know different. So we'll see. Like I said, I'm I'm willing to concede my 60 FPS requirement. You know, and I think Starfield is going to be a uh, a game of the a generation. You know, if it executes, um, gentlemen, like uh, this time next week, uh, Microsoft uh Activision Blizzard deal could be finalized. Um, the um, FTC has uh, bought to the court to get a temporary restraining order against Microsoft uh, for, to keep them from buying the closing the deal on Activision Blizzard, uh, which the judge granted. And now they're trying to get the uh, what they call it, a preliminary injunction. And in order to get that, yeah, they have to go to court, and which they literally accelerated their court by like. You know months and so i think uh i think next week they start um you know the hearings uh xbox for microsoft abk versus the ftc and it's going to be what i think like a four day hearing and depending on if pretty much how it goes is if the ftc is granted a pi or pre preliminary injunction injunction the deal is dead if they aren't then xbox is free to close the deal um and 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 I think what opted the FTC to do this is because they were under the impression that Microsoft, or they must have got notified that Microsoft was going to attempt to close the deal by June fifteenth, uh, and which put them to hurry up and put a rush on this uh, temporary restraining order. And now they got to go to court next week. Everybody's happy that they get to go to court, uh, including Microsoft and Activision. They both you know celebrated that hey, you no know, worry, we're going to be able to present our case in front of a judge and. Everything everybody told us throughout this whole entire thing is that, you know, FTC has a losing case. Uh, they don't have a, a real argument against it. And all the data and the paperwork is out there for us to read. To read. It, it, we are, we're finally looking at some light at the end of the tel and tunnel. This whole thing is done. Um, it will, will be done. Um, whether it's going to be for the deal to close or uh, for the deal to be dead. Um, you guys have any thoughts on this? I know everybody's exhausted. Uh, from this talking point. I'm good. I'm going to eat oh. my Pop-Tart while you guys talk about this point in the shit. I just want it to be over. <laughs> I, I I don't care which way it goes. I have no stake in it. Um, it. It doesn't matter to me if that deal passes. It doesn't matter to me if that deal fails. Um, it's Like I said, it's not my business. It's not my money. Um, the only games, obviously, that I've bought from Activision Blizzard in the past X amount of years has been Call of Duty and Diablo. Um, the, the, those two things have never changed. I don't care if I have to buy them. I don't care if they pop up on Game Game Pass. It's there's no. I'm not gonna sit there and be like, like a lot of a lot of these dudes out here, um, in the in the Twitter world with the the fanboyisms. You know, basically living and breathing this Activision deal. Um, it, it's it's boring. It's not entertaining anymore. Yeah, um, yeah, this is what pl pl player games don't care about it, uh, acquisition. <laughs> yeah, this act, uh, this acquisition was drawn out for a long time. Like I said, it was originally announced in January of 2022, and you know, we're in June of 2023, so we at this point, I just want them to get it done. Um, and hopefully, they're able to get it done. Like I said, I'll be happy if it goes through because I just think it, it's just a, a power move, and I'd like to see a lot of those games. Uh, coming uh, to uh, Game Pass, but yeah, it is what it is. We'll see what what happens. Um, the other thing that happened over the week is that uh, I don't know where this came from, but uh, people can fly enter an agreement with Microsoft uh, to develop a game that's worth around thirty to fifty million dollars. Any idea what this project? So, I, I have a bone to pick um, with this. Because if I remember correctly, there was a game that they put out a you know, year or so ago that they just bitched and cried about not turning a profit. 
And a lot of people blame Xbox and Game Pass, and I'm pretty sure even the developers made note about Game Pass impacting the fact that the game didn't make a profit. So for them to just go into Xbox's hands um, and want to strike a deal up with them to make a game for that 30 to $50 million is, is kind of interesting to me because it seemed like People Can Fly did not have a, a good relationship with Xbox. I feel like that they feel like they got screwed out of whatever money they were supposed to make on Outriders. Um, but here they are uh, making a, a game for them now. Uh, so that's interesting, to say the least. Uh, I'm not really a big fan of People Can Fly. They haven't really put out um, a, like, crazy amount of good games they did bullet storm which i like bullet storm um, but they also did gears judgment and so i'm not super like thrilled with whatever they're going to put out um, just because they don't have too much under their belt that's really to make me excited for whatever they're going to do i think some people thought that that with what the budget might be it might be a, a remaster remake of the original uh, Gears of War trilogy, which if that's the case, then I'm o I'm okay with that if they do that. Um, but other than that, I just don't know really what from them I, would I be looking forward for them to. Make. Um. So yeah, uh, just uh, yeah, they've been very vocal about not making a profit from the Outriders, and they've also, um, you know, said that you know as far as like uh the whole Game Pass thing, um, but the thing is is that. I think people can fly frustration is more so with Square Enix than it is with Xbox at the end of yeah, the day. Yeah, I agree. They're, um, what they did was is the problem was people can fly wasn't aware of the Xbox like deal. Because if they were, they could have probably negotiated a better or more royalties from that. But they whatever deal that they signed off with Square Enix, they signed that deal and Square Enix have like this whole like if the game sells this, da da da. You get, you know, this, if this is the profit, whatever, since they were taking on the publishing. So what they, they're going based off what the game sells. What they don't know is that this game is about to launch into Game Pass where a good portion of people can play. It's going to and then, access this game completely different than the average consumer on PlayStation and PC. Go ahead, before I continue. And, so, and let's be real. Square Enix is notorious for having unrealistic expectations on sales. So it's hard to tell. At the end of the day, it's most likely uh, the developer's fault for signing the deal with a company that has been very out of touch on how much games sell these days. Uh, because it's like, what what could it have possibly sold on Xbox? Like, max 2 to 3 million? Max? You know what I'm saying? Like, It's like, to me, it's like, this is one of those things where Square... You made a deal with Square Enix. And there... It was a bad deal. And that's why you're not getting loyalties. It's got nothing to do with anything else. Yeah, because it's undisclosed how much money uh, Microsoft paid. Microsoft didn't pay People Can Fly. They paid Square Enix. So Square Enix made whatever they were going to make. So they People Can Fly, you know, they, they agreed to, to make this game or to be contracted to make this game and, and not really think about, you know, the long-term effects that, being them as a publisher could have had. Yeah. So I think what happens here is that um people can fly has worked with Xbox, you know, before um they've worked with, you know, Epic got a good relationship with the uh, coalition. Um so there's a chance that th this could be the Gears. I think it's the Gears collection and if it's not the Gears collection, I personally think if it's not the Gears collection, right? I think it's um, yeah, I'm in a call because if they're just doing this now, I mean, the, you would think the Gears collection would have to come out before Gear I'm, Six, right? Like, I would imagine you, so. Like, if if they did, like, uh, maybe it might be something that comes up next year yeah. at whatever showcase they do next year. They'll be like, they'll do the tease of, hey, here's you know, tease Gear Six and show off the gameplay and mm -hmm. stuff from it, and then go, oh, and then while you wait for Gear Six because it's gonna be you know, a year or two away from now, right? Here is Gears Ultimate Edition coming this, or the Gears of War, I don't know, I shouldn't say Ultimate Edition because they already had Ultimate Edition, but the Gears of War collection coming this fall that you could play it, and then maybe they'll have like some type of 
multiplayer component tied to it too that might you know have all the gears one two three maps stuff like yeah. that my my dream would be uh they you know they do what they do the halo effect right but a small a smaller scale yeah with the master chief gear, collection yeah do gears one two and three and maybe since these people can fly they can throw in judgment but the multiplayer i want instead of doing all multiplayers i want gears 2's multiplayer it had the best modes <laughs> gears 2 had the best modes uh gears 2 was the one with the um meat flag right where it's two teams was and, three, and you had to capture it? the the stranded and he was strapped with a shotgun i believe that was gears 2. was it i thought that was gears 3 but it's been a while yeah, I remember Gears Three having like the football uh, field thrash bowl, Cole, and yeah. the new weapons that you like. I think they had this gun called the Digger uh, that was part of Gears Three. But I do remember my gear. Reason why Gears Two was my favorite was because of all the modes from King of the Hill Annex to Meat Flag. That whole Meat Flag mode was just the best. No one has ever put another mode like that in a game. It's literally capture a flag. It was capture the flag with a gun. Like the flag can defend itself. Like yeah. because. It- was it? I just remember the the only the most that I think that I remember about Gears Two is like how bad that that multiplayer just ran. Oh yeah, oh yeah, connection issues. So the fact horrible. that <laughs> that Cliff Blazinski came out there and said, "Hey guys, we're sorry how bad this this multiplayer runs," but you know, it, it, I don't think they're making Gears game. Yeah, so I, I, if they're not making Gears, and I honestly think they're making Outriders too, and it's going to be um and, and Xbox is publishing it. I, I don't think Square Enix owns Outriders. I think that's. People can fly his IP. They just signed a bad publishing deal because they needed somebody to publish it. Um, I think Xbox. I think it, I think it's Outriders too because I think it pro- it proved successful on Xbox Game Pass. And for Xbox, and Embracer Group buy them? No, uh, Embracer Group bought because uh, the studio People Can Fly is independent. They don't they don't work for they weren't a Square Enix studio. They um would. Embracer bought was um, Crystal Crystal Dynamics. Dynamics. Yeah, I get it. Keep going. Yeah, and and, and all their IPs. But but I think Outriders, I think that belongs to People Can Fly. It's an original IP, and they went through Square Enix to publish it. I think they're going to Xbox to publish the next one, and Xbox is agreeing to publish uh, that game, and it's going to be exclusive to Xbox. But you think that, that you think Outriders two only cost thirty to fifty million? Though? Yeah, I, I don't think the first one was that all that expensive. Oh, okay. I mean, I mean, thirty, especially now since they have the the, the outline. It already exists. Yeah, 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 the outline of it. I'll just tell you what: if if it is outright too, I I'm not excited about that whatsoever. I did not. <laughs> I did not really care about Outriders. Too. I didn't either. It was, I mean, I would, it was it was Gears of War Judgment with Destiny powers. Yeah, basically. yeah, and, and you know, I know why, man. I, I love I loved was, it, bro. I mean, it, it could hell. be. I love it. It could be just one of those things where it's like they want they want to remake an older IP because it's stuff like we don't know what these executives are saying. Look, seeing Resident Evil Four making bank and all this, mm-hmm. like let's get a developer to do this with something old of ours. I think I, I don't know what you do. It's like you you either bring them back for Gears of War, you work with them on that. I mean, or do bring you... back. You know what I want? I want a new brute force. Give me a new brute force. Okay. Okay. I, I would say I would say people f- can fly could do a new brute force game. Okay. Do that. Bring 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 that bring that franchise back. Or maybe or, maybe Coalition has already the framework done for Gear Six to give it to people can fly to finish, and then Coalition's working on something new. I I don't know. You man. think they would they would give them like the keys to, to finish Gear Six? I don't. I mean, I'm just trying to figure out what could. Yeah. Huh? I, I, maybe I not. I'm I don't gonna, think I'm... that they're that reputable. <laughs> Judgment was like one of the worst years of war game. Yeah, <laughs> I would not. I would not be interested in them having keys to Gears of War unless it's just a, a remaster. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I'm, it... just, I'm just sorry. Like Judgment. Judgment had a good campaign and it was fun to play four player co op and yeah. it, you know give a little bit of backstory, but. Outside of his campaign, like it was not. It was yeah, the not multiplayer it. wasn't War. fun. It, I didn't like the verticality. His multiplayer was the worst. Yeah, they tried to like add Call of Duty elements to the game. I did not like Gears is a grounded game, and that game had a lot of verticality. I ain't like that. People can drop down from different levels, and and it's like it took. It, I ain't gonna lie, they took a chance because they took away the cheese away from Gears, uh, because you couldn't play it like you played other Gears multiplayer. 
Uh, because yeah, it, but that's what people love Gears of War yeah. for, though. That, that's the one thing I like when Gears of War is like, hey, we're going to steer away from like the combat that you guys love in <laughs> Gears of War. And we're like, but but that's the combat that yeah. we love. That's why we play this game. It's like and, and, taking away the, the thing that brings us joy in this franchise. Yeah. And, and that's what would en- encourage like all the new weapons and stuff like that, because they want people to free up from your know, gears. Literally have the best default weapons of any video game. The, the, the Nasher, Bro, like, and the, 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 the Nasher, dude. Like, yeah, like, <laughs> like, like but the, because the one thing is, the Nasher was probably one of the most satisfying weapons to use in a video, game. <laughs> especially in the multiplayer, dude. I don't know, like, how you felt about, it, but when you got to one v one fights yeah, yeah. and stuff, and you <laughs> and you were sitting there with that Nasher going back and forth with each other and getting that successful kill, dude, it felt good. Yeah. Like, yeah. it just felt rewarding. It felt. Uh, good and it was it had weight to it and it was watching your enemies get blown up into little chunks was yeah never didn't never lost like well, it never got old is. <laughs> yeah it never got old it never <laughs> lost the the charm like not the charm but no I, you know I, what i'm getting you know what i'm going it's like it, it never lost it like i could always go in there rushing there with a shot with the nasher yeah and, and melt people with it yeah gears of war again one of my you know fair ips and like i said i understand it, it needs a break so i'm looking forward to if they do a remaster i think it'd be great and i think it would be great for them to adopt the gears gears 2 multiplayer because if gears 2 obviously a lot of people probably didn't experience that best one but it's the most broken one as far as a multiplayer but if oh uh, like do you remember the the smoke grenades in that game when that game launched it knocked you down and that's all people did was they would go in there because everybody got yeah you stick a smokey you put that out there and then everybody got one smoke grenade yeah, yeah. and i remember playing uh what was uh where you the, not the king not king of the hill but what was it called annex yeah annex and you go there and try to get on the point and then some dude would just show up there with a smoke grenade <laughs> yep toss it in there knock you down for what felt like five thousand hours <laughs> And then just come up and blast. And, 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 yeah, it was like, it was the so ultimate broken, dude. It was the ultimate one two combo. Oh, I gotta take off. All right, we we got to close this out anyway. But like, I'm literally about to close this out because I have we have no more topics. So um, all right, I'll wait around then. All right, so just just my final take. It was like gears multi, with the throwback broken smoke grenades was the ultimate multi, one two punch. You throw that in there, knock him down, go in there with the nasher. Oh, that shit, you attach it, attach it to a wall, or yeah, like, or stick it, it to a wall into somebody. Yeah, just stuck it like stick it to the wall, and then just somebody came around the corner and they get. Duh, 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 duh. Yep, <laughs> that shit was so broken, dude. Yeah, <laughs> I couldn't believe who thought that that was a good idea. <laughs> okay, well, I oh, definitely shit. appreciate you know everyone. Good successful episode, uh, play Xbox episode five, Weapon Wheel Edition, powered by the Weapon Wheel Podcast and Weapon Wheel Patreon. This show is uh, only possible uh, through you guys. Appreciate you, uh, old man Logan, for coming through. And uh, joined us for this podcast. Uh, turned out very, very, very well. So we're definitely going to do more of these uh, every Saturday. Uh, Attic, you know, always clutch, always ready, even when I'm running late and not on schedule. Uh, there for the taking. Appreciate it. Uh, and um, we're definitely going to be back uh, next week with another show. Hopefully we get some, you know, some, some news. Um, any of you guys got anything to say i mean logan you got anything going on that you want to uh shout out uh i don't really got too much going on obviously uh you guys can find me on twitter uh old man logan as always um as well as i've been trying to do some uh streaming over on twitch uh trying to do platinum runs for certain games and stuff so i did like the spec ops and i did uh and i'm working through metal of honor frontline so if you guys are interested in checking me do checking out myself doing some platinum runs uh, come hang out and uh, obviously check out Level One Gaming. It's the best gaming website ever, so don't be afraid to check us out. And uh, that's all I got for you. Awesome show. I'm glad to be back, and hopefully I'll see you guys next week too. Awesome, awesome. Addict man, addict. What you got going on? You can follow me on Twitter, Lord Addict IOP. Tomorrow we'll be doing Iron Lord's podcast. Uh, King's already going crazy over. Some Spider-Man coffins being locked behind some paywall or something like that. I don't know what's. I I'll find out when you guys find out what he got to say about that. But appreciate him for coming through, and uh, appreciate uh, Logan for coming through. See you guys Hell next yeah. week. All right, and also I got the 
Rogue Ally Xbox handheld. Just wanted to shout that out. I don't know if I'll do an unboxing video, but I figured I, you know, show it off for the podcast. Uh, we're gonna be talking about that. It's not even in there. Nah, nah, it's, it's full plastic. I will show up. I got the Best Buy sticker, but it has my address on it. <laughs> Um, but I'll probably be talking about this uh, sometime ne- uh, during the podcast next week. Probably put out a video. I don't have like a camera to show off handhelds like that. So that's why a video like this would be a little bit hard to do. So I'll do an unboxing shortly after we wrap up this podcast. But um, other than that, Logan, you're great. Addict Clutch. We will see you guys next week as always. Xbox is the best box. I am the best bot. Good night or good morning if you're on the other side of the globe. We are out of here. Peace.